Welcome to the channel rather dubiously called Rufio. I'm the best YouTuber in my street, a very average player who uses this platform to trick you into thinking I'm good at and capable of playing Yu-Gi-Oh on any kind of level at all. Before we get started, why don't you hit subscribe for me, even if it's not because you secretly enjoy bad content, but because you pity me. I need every bit of help I can get. Hi guys, welcome to Rufio. We are here for the Monday Market Watch. If this is your first time on the channel, welcome aboard. Hopefully we can keep you around for more of these. If this is not your first time here, I think you're absolutely fucking insane. There's nothing of value to see on this channel. But thank you. Hopefully you've already subscribed and it's too late for you to unsubscribe because you wouldn't go back on your word now, would you? As part of today's Market Watch, we're looking at a few shakers and movers that are out on the market, including Garden Rose Maiden, which we are seeing used in VFD combos. There's also a few other bits and bobs I wanted to take a look at, some requests as well, which we're going to be looking through, a few that I kind of just wanted to look at myself, and some of the new cards that have been printed in Dual Overload and Eternity Code and see what kind of way they're trending here in Europe. Of course, our market is slightly different to what we see in the US, which is just absolutely balmy at the moment. In fact, it really always is. The EU and UK market's a little bit more stable for the most part, but we're going to go and see what changes have come about. So we're not going to fuck around too much more. We're going to get stuck right in to the market watch. So we're going to start off today's market watch looking at one of the big movers of the week. My pick of the week for a card that has risen up insanely in price we've seen this in particular on ebay getting completely bought out nothing under 30 pounds or around 34 35 euros at this time uh, on ebay on card market fortunately it is a little bit cheaper towards the 10 euro mark of course you must count in postage costs with that but again 12 euros or so including postage is certainly a lot better than the double that you'd be paying on ebay this has risen up hugely from around the four euro mark i know personally i'd seen this in uh, a video from the duelist academy uh, which i'm a part of and i would recommend you join the same if you want to improve your game but enough shilling for that sort of thing i'd seen it in a combo in one of the videos on there and it sort of broken out everywhere else people have also been playing it i think from from elsewhere and uh, it's getting you into vfd combos and that's one of the main key things that it is doing and as a as a kind of result of that we've seen the price on this scoop up hugely in that time one thing that is worth noting is it is another one of these cards that has seen a singular print the same problem that we see over and over again with these legendary duelist sets as cards come out the kind of ignored and thrown in binders and everyone forgets about them and it takes some fucking huge brain like jesse cotton to go find them and realize that actually the card's kind of good and got some use and then boom they just blow up go through the roof it's up to you whether you want to stick or twist on this one i'm always in favor of these kind of cards of selling them quite early we are getting some reprints of some of the legendary duelist cards i can't remember exactly what the packs are so don't know whether this is included in that but will it continue to see play after this whole combo bullshit's gone on? Who knows? And also by the time we get back into competitive play in the physical sense, it may already be worth having shipped on. Next up, we're taking a look at another card which has continued to rise up in price. I mentioned this before in my previous two market watches that Mecha Phantom Beast O-Line has been on the increase and that trend continues to go upward. It is a mandatory part of these crazy needle fiber uh, combos that we're seeing with like Link Cross and all of those just going absolutely fucking insane spamming tokens which konami seems to hate but they keep just making these fucking cards that do it for some reason uh and yeah it's just absolutely bonkers if you don't have a copy already you really should have but i suspect that it may be too late it may not be worth doing by the time the new format comes around and we get to play physically again will this card have survived that list that is something that remains to be seen we also have another card that is continuing to creep up around four euros fifty for something good five euros for something in near mint condition again you're gonna to have to tack on a little bit for your postage and that kind of thing but the overall trend on this is scooping up towards the seven euro mark on the whole this card has seen an awful lot of play to out these crazy combo boards that we're seeing again the same sort of thing that we saw when we had the the rocket dragon link thing going on uh, a couple of formats ago and uh, we've continued to see one or two decks creep in but actually it's come right to the forefront and they've become the strongest kind of decks to play the likes of adamantipator and that you just want to be able to blow them out and dark ruler no more gives you a good chance of that the only downside to the card is it basically says you can't win this turn but if you blow your opponent out of enough resources you should win anyway 
Next up, we have a pointer of the red lights. One that I'd tip to be in the new OTS pack. I'd actually heard a rumor when those releases were actually leaked about the new ultis, and there was rumor that a pointer of the red lights had been included in the set. Unfortunately, it wasn't, and I would have liked to have seen it reprinted. I'm not a fan of them keeping old cards like this locked up particularly old ones that are seeing meta relevance and we're seeing commons at like six, seven, eight, nine euros a pop. It's it's a little bit high. I mean, I don't mind that kind of thing, particularly for me, but I, I can definitely see the gripe with other people wanting to pick these up. If you are a competitive player and you need access to this card, it has been another OTS gone. So the question is, would we see it reprinted in any other sets? That's a risk you have to be willing to take. Personally, if I'm someone who wants to play competitively and I've got the feeling the competitive events are going to continue in the physical sense, I would probably pick this card up now, regardless of this €5 Euro price tag. Next, we're going to do a quick run through all the Gizmet cards. Obviously, we've seen Gizmet Uka just shut up in price quite recently. They were going up to like €30 Euros a pop on eBay. Uh, I do believe that they've come down, but we'll cover those in a moment. But I also wanted to look at some of the other Gizmets. This particular one had been requested, so I figured I would just cover them all in one go. We're seeing Gizmet Orochi, one of the, the original good Gizmets, I should say. Uh, the one that's actually seen fucking play, and particularly in August and a few other decks. But anyway, it's yo up and down around the 15 euro mark. That is the trend that we continue to see overall. The price trend is 17 euros, which again is ballpark that sort of price range. Next up, we have Gizmet Kaku, a card that has continued to drop down. It's seen a slight decrease over time. This is something I would probably consider picking up it has a lot of beneficial attributes and things going on it's a machine type uh, it's fire it's a good level it steals opponents monsters i do believe that this actually has some potential really good viability and it's definitely the thing that you should be picking up while it's cheap because it also has the possibility that it just shoots straight through the roof if it becomes competitively viable as discussed we have gizmet uka we see on here this trend where it had scoped all the way down in the last couple of weeks it had risen up and it's continued to yo-yo down a little bit again i bought mine when they're a little bit more expensive than what we're seeing here but they are about 11 euros a pop at the moment it is something again that you should consider picking up like the other gizmex they have a lot of potential to be incredibly viable in a variety of different formats i think that we'll come to see these a little bit like kaijus as the kind of cards that you want to see in your side deck depending on how the format pans out at 11 euros a pop for a near mint that's actually a really good price and something that i think you should be willing to pay for something that has the potential to go through the roof again much like the previous gizmec that we've already discussed and lastly, we're looking at the cheapest of the Gizmex just to complete the roundhouse. I mean, this is two cents is like the cheapest, so don't even worry about this one. Next up, I wanted to take a look at another card in its probably its best print in the Bosch version, Dragon Buster Destruction Sword. We've seen it a lot in these combos combined with Union Carrier getting just pinned on monsters and locking the opponent out playing. Fortunately, it is still very cheap, so it's a very, very small gamble to take. If you don't have this card already, this is probably the kind of thing you want to pick up at less than a euro to go it's worth the punt that it gets banned who cares and you just stick it in your binder for a rainy day but if it doesn't you really want to have this card available to you and if it doesn't get hit i do think that we'll see these prices spike right the way up as requested i'm covering junk convert this is a card that we have seen yo yo up and down over time as high as three euros or so you can now get them less than a euro the question is whether you want to punt on this it is worth noting that once again this is another singular print card the possibility of getting this quite cheap is something that you can consi should consider investing in you can get your play set for less than three euros plus postage maybe five euros and to have it sat there as a possibility to work with it does obviously search synchron so that is something to consider it has some potential competitive viability down the line and again it's super cheap so why not another one that i was interested in covering and we've seen it go as high as eight euros in the last month it is back down to around the three euro mark um just one that's worth potentially picking up and having in your arsenal uh, it's got some ability to go into i believe it's the simorg link that people are using this with on the whole uh, we see a list recently of dinos from marty which if you know a little bit about your uk players you may have seen he was playing this in his list and so for that reason i wanted to cover it and see how it was getting on overall it's still pretty cheap again something that may be worth picking up it's another single print card if it does become any kind of important linchpin in a competitive mechanic we will see those prices scoop up Next, we're looking at one that I'd seen that went absolutely wild in the US market, Lightning Storms. They have continued to rise up and up and up over there. Over here, however, they seem to have plateaued. We did have one point where it looks like they were bought out in the last few days, but they've 
come all the way back down to the 80 euro mark. On the average, you're looking closer to 82, 83 euros, which actually isn't too bad a price. Um, 85 if you want a first edition, which again has come down from the original prices. I do think that this is one of these cards, so that again, we're probably not going to see a reprint of for a while. So if you intend to access competitive events, if you can't borrow this kind of stuff, this is the kind of thing that you want to have bought up and in your staples collection. Next up, I wanted to look at a few cards that have been making some crazy movements in the competitive game. Of course, we've only got the online market to really go by, but what I wanted to do was cover a few of those. So we're looking for Auroradon, which is only about 50 cents at the moment, but has the potential to go up quite significantly. It is played in basically every deck at the moment. It is a key part of those combos with Halka Fibrax and with Lincross and all those other bullshit tuners and stuff that are going on. So it is one of those cards that you should probably have in your collection. Next up, we're looking at Linkross. It's around 15 euros at the starting mark, all the way up to around the 20 euro mark, depending on condition, where you want to get it from, and that kind of thing. This is a really, really key part of these crazy combos that we have seen doing the rounds. If it doesn't get banned, I suspect fully that this card will shoot up again, and it will be very hard to pick up. It is a token generator, which again is something that Konami seem to hate, so it wouldn't shock me if it got hit in some capacity. But in the meantime, it's definitely one of those cards that you should probably pick up. I think for around 15 euros a pop it's worth a punt if it does get banned then when it eventually comes back and it probably would i don't think it's too crazy if it did get hit uh and down the line it may be a card that you want to be able to have access to and then of course the prices would go crazy for 15 euros i think it's worth a punt you should probably gamble on this if you're considering gambling on anything this would be one of the cards that i would recommend next up we're looking at animadorned arkasaur bit of a tongue twister for me i really struggled to say this name for some reason i think i nailed it that time thank you very much uh, for my round of applause out there the jewel beast around 30 euros a pop at the moment this actually isn't too bad a price dinos are really really solid pick this format I don't see them being in the firing line of getting hit. The only thing that I could potentially see would be something like Baby Sarasaurus. But as has been pointed out to me recently, they have just reprinted the structure deck. So they're going to want to shift those for a little while soon. So we'll see in a few months if this is still doing some crazy shit. We may see the deck get hit, but not enough to warrant you not having this card in your collection if you intend to play the deck. The deck isn't a really good place, like I said. Overall, it's very, very budget-friendly. This is by far the most expensive card you're going to need in your main deck and is one that you should have one to two copies of available to you if you're considering playing the deck. Next up we're looking at Union Carrier which has trended upwards somewhat towards the 9 euro mark. Now I did say for the longest time when this was on its way down is a card you should have in your repertoire. It's something that you want to have access to that you can use in whatever decks you need to. We've seen some broken crazy plays that this can set up and it is an important key part of all of these nutty combo decks that are doing that break my board sort of thing and that is why we are seeing the price rise up it is something you should pick up now before the prints run out on these and they start to scoop up naturally anyway I wanted to take a look at Grave Digger's Trap Hole. It's an interesting card from the new set. Again, in the US, I'm not sure if they've got this yet at the time of recording. I know Echo's in a weird place in terms of being pushed out. This card's actually looking really, really interesting. Um, the price has continued to trend down around the 12 euros mark. It's something that may be worth considering picking up. I understand it's a trap card and they can be a little bit slow, but there are formats where this is going to come up and actually be viable, in my opinion. Something that I would consider picking up, especially if you can get them even just that little bit cheaper towards maybe the 10 euro mark if you're lucky a play set for 30 to 35 doesn't seem so bad to me next up i wanted to look at ghost mourner and moonlit chill the latest installment to the ghost girls the starlight rare is actually one of the cheaper ones from my experience from seeing of course apart from the ones that nobody plays so it's actually not too bad however looking at the secret reds you're looking around the 15 to 20 euro mark across the board depending on where you get it from i don't think this is too bad a price it's worth considering whether you want this in your collection with the rest of your ghost girls for people who want secrets for all of theirs at least the ones that are available then this is probably worth picking up or it's a question of whether you hold out and hope it doesn't become meta relevant in that time and get a reprint at some point in like ultra or something in a set maybe later on this year or early next year 15 euros a pop for a ghost girl that may become incredibly viable in the meta it's up to you whether you think that's worth the gamble or not and lastly, for this episode of Market Watch, I wanted to cover Gearsu, the Orcus Mech Knight. We had seen it as high as 60, 70 euros. It's all the way down to around 40 euros a pop. This hasn't had the impact that people suspected it may do. 
with mech knights, orcas, that kind of thing. We haven't really seen it in the online play. It's not really been represented in any kind of way. Orcus hasn't really seemed to have gained much from this as much as we thought it might. And for that reason, the prices continue to trend down. The question is whether you want to stick or twist on this. It could be one of those cards that if they become meta relevant in any way, this will shoot up again. It'll be a lot like Din Gear, so in that it'll go whoop, straight back up. The question is whether you stick or twist. For me personally, I'd be waiting out on this to see if it drops down to closer to the 20 mark. So that it's a it's a good pickup for any of those kind of world legacy archetypes to have it available to you anyway. And for people who kind of want to play and mess around with Orcus, of course you want the option. But on the whole, I don't think it's worth paying the price that it's at now. I think you should wait and take the risk that it doesn't get sort of found out before then and shoot up. Personally, I'd say wait on this one. So that is it for today's Market Watch. Thank you very much for checking in, guys. If you haven't already, you should definitely hit subscribe. If you are looking forward to more Market Watches in the future, I would definitely love to hear what kind of cards you would like to have covered. Any changes you think that I should pay attention to in the market, I'm easy enough to find on social media, particularly across Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. In particular, Facebook, you'll see me going around the groups and talking a lot of shit usually. Uh, definitely easy enough to approach me. Of course, drop it down in the comments. You should hit a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you didn't like it, let me know what you didn't like. Apologies that there has been this kind of weird humming in the background. I have the world's loudest fucking fridge. I probably should have mentioned that earlier on. Thank you very much again for checking in, guys. And I will see you in the next one. Thank you for watching. Hopefully you've enjoyed the garbage content I put together for you. Enough to hit subscribe and maybe even drop a thumbs up and a comment. Before you go, be sure to check out the links in the description to help support the people who are making this channel a possibility. Thanks again for checking in and I'll see you in the next one.